So I'm just trying to connect my microphone. What I always hope for with these events. Right, I'm going to go live. So that women can actually speak. I want them to understand testosterone. The transitioners. Do you like to speak? And then you. I, you know, we have had violence and we've had really nasty protests. We've had intimidation. I don't think I anticipated mostly men to get away with such incredible intimidation and threatening behavior towards women with no consequences. Just really crazy. It's like something out of a horrible dystopian novel. In the US, your children are definitely being indoctrinated if they're in state schools, it, without a shadow of a doubt. And you probably have no idea what it is they've been taught. The biggest thing for me is how unsafe women are in this country when they want to speak. I've talked to lots of women throughout this whole tour on all different sides of the debate and I think it's extraordinary in a country that claims to have free speech that you have no right to be heard and I think it's really, really frightening for American women. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I should probably take you back to Los Angeles. I've already done. So when we came out in 2019 to Washington, um, I did a little bit of lobbying, and I came back again to Atlanta to watch Leah Thomas, a man competing in women's swimming. That's not a woman. I'm not a vet, but I know what a dog is. When we did that, it really ignited women in the States, and I think the threat that is posed here is just horrific. And so the States is a natural place to come if we want to put an end to this pernicious ideology. Hollywood, because there's quite a few famous doctors in Hollywood who are quite happy to promote the mutilation of kids' bodies. Hollywood itself seems to want to push this narrative, certainly TV. And obviously you've got the prisons, and Gavin Newsom, who is hell-bent on making women's life in prison like hell on earth. I'm a women's rights campaigner, which literally means somebody that campaigns for women's rights. That might be our spaces, our language, our legal rights and legal definitions. I'm absolutely not a feminist. Feminists made me not want to identify as a feminist. Some really bad behaviour um, by feminists in the UK, that would mean feminism was a stick to beat me with. They would say, so because I was a stay-at-home sure mother, I couldn't be a feminist. Because I wore makeup, I couldn't be a feminist. And so I was like, fine, I won't be a feminist. And it means I'm far more free to do whatever I want within the context of campaigning okay, for women's that. rights women? and reach more women. <laughs> right, I'm going to go live. Oh, there we go. Uh, well, good afternoon. All right, should we talk? Should we do it? I guess we should. Uh, well, good. It's a good start. OK. Okay, good afternoon, uh, and welcome to Hollywood. So very exciting and weird. Um, so, this is a Speaker's Corner. This is a tradition uh, in the UK. Unlike here, we don't have a right to free speech, um, and you're losing yours here in this country. So what we've decided to do, because women face an existential crisis, uh, and the bodies of our children through the threat of transgender ideology, we thought we'd come to the very heart of where it's being sold. Through your schools, your children are being gaslit, coerced and manipulated. Through your doctors, through your very, very well-funded pharmaceutical industries. 
Uh, and so this is how we run it. You come and say what you want because you're finding in your places of work you can no longer say that you don't want men in your spaces. You have to pretend that women have penises. You have to pretend that it's brave and stunning for girls in this country age 12 to have double mastectomies. Thank you everybody for coming out. I realise it's a really brave step to come and speak against this pernicious orthodoxy. So, who would like to be my first American? Who's thinking about the parents? The government isn't thinking about the parents. Governor Newsom passes SB 107 and makes us a gender sanctuary state. The schools aren't caring when they secretly call your daughter or son by another name, gender and pronoun behind your back. Thank you very much for wearing a jumpsuit. Kelly J asked us to do two things. Be the billboard and stop using female language for men. A man in a dress is a man in a dress. She continually prods us, consistently modeling the ease and clarity of using plain language. Uh, for anybody walking by, they are teaching the idea of biological sex is something inside your child's head. The way they behave is fixed and their bodies can be changed. And it is happening because Big Pharma makes a lot of money from making medical patients for life by starting puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones. Nice and loudly into that okay. microphone. I'd like to follow up with what's going on in our school. Gender identity discussion is not under health, so it doesn't have to be a health care um, specialist that teaches that like they teach biology or the sex class. It's under social studies. So parents do not hear about it because they don't have to be informed and tell people all across the country. Transgender care for children. You have no idea what you're talking about. You think you should sterilize kids? You think you should sterilize kids and you think you have moral authority? How dare you? Well, he certainly felt like he could interrupt me. Thank you very much. And stop sterilizing kids on the basis that they say that they feel they don't fit into their body or their body isn't right for them. The sentiment is that the left is failing. The people, the I ideas, the goals, ignoring women's sex-based rights on the left is just unacceptable. My name is Amy Achikawa. I'm here to give women in prison uh, a voice. I've never spoken about this personally, so this is kind of a big deal. In 2009, I was arrested for kidnapping and several other felonies. This was during the height of the LA County Jail illegal strip search scandal. So this is where female erasure is starting. Because after going through that, your whole sense of self-worth or even respecting your body is not really there anymore because you don't feel like a human being. As the new laws and gender self-ID practices started coming into play, uh, I started getting an overwhelming amount of letters from inside calls, messages, um, just emergency contacts um, <clears throat> stating that I'm scared. What do I do? Amy, there's a rapist in my room. What am I supposed to do? Kelly J immediately got me on her podcast and immediately reached down to pull me and my people up from a very, very dark place. They're handing out condoms in women's prisons in this country because there are so many men in with women locked in their cells for 23 hours a day. I'm an activist. I'm sorry I'm wearing a mask, but I have to stay anonymous. Why can't he just be a little boy that likes dresses? The people most likely to scorn are young white people because they don't understand genuinely what oppression is. And so they've invented this new one so they can feel it. And I went on a lesbian dating sites and started looking into it and realized they were full of men. Men can't be lesbians and their girlfriends aren't lesbians either. I'm a father of a student, athlete, a daughter in one of the affluent beach cities. This sign went up at the entrance to the girls, air quotes, girls locker room. Oh. My daughter's job and her, her, her peers is to affirm males who come into that space. I think it's just insidious that schools would take part in encouraging children to have secrets from their parents. Isn't that like the first rule of safeguarding? Hello? Yes, hi. Yeah. You guys can hear me. When I committed my crime, I was convicted of aggravated mayhem and torture, and 
That situation involved a person who had tried to sex traffic me when I was 17. When I came to prison, uh, the degrading strip searches continued. I was sexually assaulted by a male officer. Then we get to a situation where they bring the trans male to female population into the female prisons. Right before they came, an uh, officer made her morning announcement, and she said, the men are coming, you better fight to kill. At that point, I started telling all my friends, we need to make weapons. Mind you, after committing my crime, I never imagined hurting another person, acting out violently. I don't want to say that I'm just uncomfortable with trans people. I don't want to sound like that because that's not what it is. The problem is the Senate bill that gave trans people more rights over women. Again, women's rights are some secondary to other people. I labeled myself as trans, non-binary person. I only did it for equal protection under the law. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you. If you look in the face of a child and say, there is no such thing as being born in the wrong body, then I promise we will win. And do you know why else we're going to win? Why? We know. We because I never do. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. I think we're done. So we met here in LA today. Uh, this is the first stop of the US talking about Let Women Speak. I'm really um, pleased to be here. I'm really happy I came. And we decided to start in LA because it's the epicenter, if you like, of all that's woke. And we've met on the Hollywood stars. In this city, there are children having their breasts removed, age 12 and 13. There are kids being put on puberty blockers. They are coercing kids in school into this crap. So this was really a good place for people to meet. Everyone is welcome. We're just a few days in on our way to San Francisco, and that's where our next talk is. We did uh, our talk in Hollywood, and then we just acclimatized a little bit because the, yeah, the time difference is horrendous. So for the first few nights, I only sleep about sort of two, three hours tops. I went to the middle of nowhere to pick up an RV. We've driven up to Morro Bay, and we are potentially in one of the most gorgeous places in America, if not the globe, and it's lovely. So I'm going to try and do a live stream, and I need it on front camera, I just realised, even though I've got it all set up, because I can't, otherwise I can't read what people are saying. Try and work out how to both be able to read and not have my whole face. <laughs> uh, hello, good afternoon. Um, I am on the beach in California and I have no idea if you can see or hear a damn word I'm saying. We had our first, I'm breaking up a bit. Oh, great. Okay. So, um, Liz Trust lasted. 44 uh, days. Right, hang on, let me just take this. Let me just see if I can fix my sound. Just bear with me. So I'm in the middle of nowhere in uh, California. I know they can't hear. It's not working. Right, I have to do this from the RV. But this is get, this is leave everything you've got and move, isn't it? Territory. Never it's so friendly. Like, maybe it's, maybe it's a class thing because posh places in Europe and in the UK, people don't stop and have a chat. Certainly not middle-aged men or past middle-aged men. My grandfather would have because he was working class. But here, you just had two blokes just stopping and having a really lovely, hey, I hope you have a great holiday. Welcome to California. You know, just, it's a different, totally different feel. Don't start commenting and stuff when I'm doing stuff. Well, it's really hot. I think you should probably go outside. We'll stand in the shade then. No? 
Good afternoon. I really, really hope this is lots better. So Liz Truss has gone. This is what I was trying to talk about earlier. And Liz Truss was obviously going to be somebody we felt knew what a woman was, and we don't know what's coming. Miss Misery Gloom says, Kelly J, I can't believe we're speaking at the Space Needle. You're amazing. Thank you. I have no idea what the context of that is, but the Space Needle, I think, is in San Francisco, Seattle. One of those lovely places. Um, and I'm very, very excited. So we had our first bit in Hollywood. And you can hear from literally inside hell. That's what we all want from prison, isn't it? Punishment and rehabilitation. And by the sound of it, uh, it's just punishment and dehumanising. If we can uplift the work of other women. I promise we will win. And do you know why else we're going to win? Because I never lose. I think it's just something that I sort of say to be a little bit tongue-in-cheek and now it's stuck. Oh God, I feel like an idiot if I say it does something for people listening, but I do think it does. Especially in the UK, we're so used to people um, <sighs> sort of not able to say nice things about themselves or be confident. And confidence is sort of seen as a brashness and um, just, something you're not supposed to be. You're not supposed to be a confident woman, you're supposed to be meek. I think what works for me, the fact that I look like this, so wear a, a substantial amount of makeup, dye my hair, dress very feminine, but then also have these characteristics of not being remotely kind of submissive, I think that works for people. And I think everybody knows someone like me, right? There's always a woman that talks too much at the school gates. I'm that woman. Monterey on our way to San Francisco. I'm nobody, right? I'm just somebody who says a woman is an adult human female and let's not transition children. And I would be unremarkable 10 years ago, five years ago even. But because everybody's so frightened to say it now, I get tearful hugs of thanks and gratitude because these women are so desperate. It's not a measure of me, it's a measure of the desperation of these parents who send their kids to school, who get transitioned at school, who can lose their children if they speak up against it. And they say fascism doesn't come as like a big fat monster, it comes as your friend. And that's exactly what I think is happening here. Gender ideology that seeks to disrupt families, destroy children's bodies and women's rights is coming as like a be kind. We came during the midterms to have that as sort of this backdrop of this exciting political time in the American election cycle. Well, I have no idea what impact this tour will do. So far it seems to be talking to the right people and giving support. There will be people that met at the event in Hollywood who didn't know they were local to each other, who now have like real life support. So that's pretty incredible. And I am really looking forward to San Francisco. It's gonna be great. Well, San Francisco, because there's an element of crazy and it's big. When I was planning what I was going to do in the States, I had a look at the sort of engagement through different analytics on YouTube, on my website, to find out where are these people that are screaming into the void. You know, and I have emails from women saying, I can't talk to anybody about this. So we looked at where the sort of hotspots were, and San Francisco is one of them. I think the crowd will be bigger. I think more women will come out. I think we may get some trans rights activists, some violent men. I think a lot of them will save all their muster for Portland. We met at 12. There's a little bit of deliberation over tech. Hello, hello. At that point, I then started getting a bit, I don't know what it is, probably high adrenaline. So there's a bit of kind of franticness about everything to get it started. OK, can you hear that? And then I feel very responsible for everybody else's okay. time and safety. And then we just start. Afternoon. Uh, we are here at the burlesque strip show for kids. Uh, oh no, it's drag, it's drag. It's drag queen story, uh, pumpkin carving time. Uh, here in San Francisco, the aptly named Scott Wiener is hosting a Wiener Fest uh, of a drag show for kids. And weirdly, people are coming. People have actually brought their children. Down the street, I believe, is a 
burlesque for babies. Adult sexuality mixing with kids is one of the main kind of components of this absolute wacko, crazy uh, movement called transgenderism. It's weird that there's a state senator promoting adult sexuality to children. The whole bloody thing is about erasing children's boundaries uh, between adults and children's um, bodies and between children and adult sexuality. If it was a woman as a sexualized version of herself, they wouldn't be here. There are literally people thinking it's a great act of diversity and inclusion to bring their children to something um, promoted by this man who's erased uh, women's rights. He's pushed through SB 132. Uh, he's put male rapists in women's prisons. He's promoting the idea that if you can't get surgery in your state for your kid, you can come and have them sterilized in California. We can't even say who we are anymore. We can't even say what we are anymore. And in California, it really does seem to promote men's sexual rights above everything else. My name is Lear Keith, and I'm the founder of Wolf. Wolf is the group that is suing the state of California in federal court on behalf of women in prison. And that's because California, in all its wisdom, decided that men in prison could declare themselves women and get transferred to the women's prison. Hundreds of them have decided they are women and they want in. Uh, Scott Penis Wiener. Scott Pen Wiener. Scott Wiener um, with this uh, grooming, carving, carving session. Uh, who else would like to talk? Yes. On the first day of school this year, my 10 and 12 year old sons were asked by three separate teachers for their preferred pronouns on getting to know you questionnaires. Men who parade their kink and their fetish can be safe whilst dressed as witches. It's just too perfect. Hello everyone, my name is Kat. I'm so excited to be here. I'm a detransitioner, so I, I uh, once identified as a man, I began taking testosterone to masculinize my body in what I thought was um, becoming matched with my male gender identity. And I started believing this ideology at age 13. I was very vulnerable. I had an eating disorder. I had ADHD and, and possibly undiagnosed autism. And I felt very uncomfortable in my body. As soon as I read about gender dysphoria, I thought, that's what I have. That's why I hate my body so much. And that ideology, starting to believe that manhood and womanhood were feelings rather than biological reality that caused me to suffer for the next 15 years because i believe the lies i believed that if i had gender dysphoria and i didn't transition that i was likely to commit suicide i i really thought i was hopeless if i continued as a woman but i was also a professional singer it took me a long time to decide to transition because if my livelihood was also in jeopardy. When I went to testify in front of uh, Senator Weiner about my story, um, he told me it, it's not happening. What I told Senator Weiner on that day was that I called Planned Parenthood and I thought there would be some kind of evaluation process to go through to get my testosterone and start my transition. Instead, I was prescribed within 30 minutes. Um, this was during COVID. I was prescribed over the phone and I was able to pick up my prescription the same day. They obviously did not look into my medical history. They did not see any of my comorbid mental health conditions. Or if they did, they didn't care. And within months, I started suffering from severe health side effects. I also watched several other trans-identified individuals in my life who were close to me start having side effects as well. They started to suffer from uh, worsening mental health issues, worsening physical health issues. So I can't even imagine being 13, reading this stuff online, and then being affirmed by my teachers, my doctors, the president of the United States. But how just devastating is it that we, um, that anybody thinks transitioning kids is not serious harmful abuse? Anyone defending it, I just don't even understand. I'm really sorry, but I just can't stand here and let you say these things. Okay, why do you think sterilizing children is okay? I don't think that people do sterilize children. Do you think they have their fertility after puberty blockers? How much experience do you have? Do you think, answer have? the question, do you no, think, sweetie. do they think they, they have, no. Puberty blockers sterilize children. You just please, please, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I think what you're doing is creating a false dichotomy in case we need to be protected. 
protected from doctors who wanted to cut off their breasts? Or do kids just need protected from knowing that you can't change sex? Do you think that somebody can have a vagina created by a doctor that works? I do, actually. You do? Yeah. Jesus Christ almighty. <laughs> you genuinely think a vagina can be created that self-lubricates, that doesn't rot inside, that doesn't have necrosis? You think? Yes. And you think that, um, that somebody born uh, assigned male at birth can change into a woman and have babies? You just haven't read about it. You just have a letter stay in this thing. I think it's really hateful to lie to children and vulnerable people like yourself and say that it's possible to change sex. It isn't. Do you think for the feelings in your head, which would be gender, do you think you should alter your body to suit that? Or do you think maybe, just maybe, it would be advisable to change the way you feel about your body so that you could live in it happily? You change the colour of your hair. Oh. Yeah, that's just wow. the same as having a new vagina. Wow. Changing the colour of my hair. It changes, it changes how you feel about yourself and how you present. Yeah, but it's not going to cause necrosis. It's not going to make me infertile by having blonde hair. Well, it could cause cancer. I mean, all, all choices have downsides. Oh, my God. There are young women in this country that have tried to have phalloplasty that urinate from their anus. Right, would anybody else like to come and talk? It won't hurt you, I promise. Crazy. Women can get raped in prison by trans women. So I'm a mental health professional, one of the few that are speaking out. Woo! I'm speaking to the parents. Please don't trust the the expert blindly, please don't believe their lies that your child is going to kill themselves if you don't affirm. Our profession is captured. Drag queens are sex clowns. Yes. We have regular clowns. Regular clowns are the kind of clowns that are appropriate for children. There's, there's no reason to have sex clowns for children unless you are trying to groom them. And that is exactly what they are trying to do. Back in 2019, the Netherlands looked at 2,200 trans women who were put on estrogen and they found that it increased the rate of breast cancer by 46 times. Do you know how expensive it is to treat cancer? I don't, I don't know if you guys know, it is, it is incredibly profitable, no matter how, what the outcome is. Empowering parents as first educators and primary educators. Like, talk to your kid before someone else talks to them about this. We fill out this form, and it said, you know, are you heterosexual, are you bisexual? And he said, I'm trisexual. Basically, if it's sexual, I'll try it. <laughs> and so teenagers are developing their sense of self, their sense of identity. Many heterosexual teenagers have same-sex experiences. And many gay teenagers have opposite sex experiences. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Kelly? I just got notification that my donation was refunded to me because Eventbrite says this violates their community standards. Ah, so if you donated on Eventbrite, uh, apparently they also don't support uh, not sterilizing kids. So uh, thank you if you donated, but maybe you'll have to go straight to my platform. We came here to San Francisco because uh, SB 132 puts male rapists in women's prisons. And lots of people here are quite happy to endorse a man who basically promotes the sterilization of children. And the reason, and I don't even think they're bad people. I think they just believe the lie that puberty blockers are reversible. I think they believe the lie that being born in the wrong body is actually a thing. You are your body. You cannot be born in the wrong body. You are your body. We tell people all the time to love the body they're in, except we only seem to be telling people that are morbidly obese or with disabilities. They have to love their disabilities and the bodies that they're born in. But if you think you're a boy and you're a girl, or if you think you're a girl and you're actually a boy, we tell you you should change your body to fit the way you feel. It's so important that we speak up that we stand up, that we are counted, that we be brave in defense of reality. We have no right as, as medical providers, as practitioners, to be interfering with normal development when there's no demonstrable problem just to manage the emotional uh, angst of the teenage years. I came back to my profession in San Mateo, California at a teen group therapy program, and three out of ten kids there were identifying as non-binary. 
they were all girls. And what was shocking to me was not just what the kids were doing and saying, but what my colleagues were not saying or not doing and not addressing their underlying issues when every single one had some very obvious underlying issue like trauma. I asked my mom at one point when I was 14 um, if I could go see a doctor about my gender dysphoria. At the time, you know, shows like I Am Jazz and Caitlyn Jenner had just come out and it was all this, it was all in the media and I was just this uh, flamboyant little gay boy and, um, you know, my mom, she, she kind of pushed back. Are you sure you want this? There's no going back. It's sad to me to think that, you know, my mother's opinion, you know, as a, as a gay gender nonconforming woman herself would now be seen as transphobic. You know, it's like, I, I feel like her pushback then saved my life. You know, I don't know how far I would be down the road with medical transition now had she not pushed back and the younger generation can also see the truth for what it is and that we're not indoctrinated and that, you know, humanity is not too far gone into this hole of delusion. Yeah. The testosterone caused a specific type of uh, vocal damage. You know, it jeopardized my career. And also I had some concerning health side effects, uh, liver, gallbladder symptoms, heart palpitations, which was also from binding my chest. To have this, what I call the um, religious left, come in and devalue parents or, and even treat them like adversaries is just making vulnerable kids even more vulnerable. So in California, it's nearly impossible to get politicians to listen to you, at least politicians on the left. I voted Democratic in every single election I was eligible to vote in. This upcoming election is the first time I'm reconsidering that. I think there's something really interesting that's been displayed by this latest kind of social change, as it were, which I think is an engineered change. And I think we have to start thinking that if gay rights was just about women, would they ever have been, would they ever have even happened? Like, would, it, would lesbians ever have got anywhere if it wasn't for the benefit of gay men? I'm just wondering if all along it wasn't just about men's rights. And that's why any civil rights movement that contains men as victims uh, is far more likely to succeed than civil rights movements that actually talk about women. With Portland, we know that thousands of Antifa are gonna come in from different places. I know that Portland's particularly lawless and I don't think the police are gonna help. So at this moment, my gut feeling is that my kids might still want a mum in a week's time. So we may have to rethink, is it worth anyone losing their life? I don't think so. I just don't think so. Okay, so Mendocino Forest. How many hours is that? Four hours. Wherever we're going now is on the way to Seattle and Portland. This RV, when we first got it, seems really big. <laughs> and like by day five, it's just annoying. It's not so cute. You know, there's a principal in a school in Portland who's tweeted yesterday that I'm good friends with David Duke. So when you get that level of just lies and whipping up sort of kids into a frenzy, or not even kids, I mean most of these are adults, mm. into some sort of frenzy against this monster, which is me, which is not remotely true, I think it just makes everything really, really unsafe. And I think the problem with Antifa is not what their aims and objectives are, because I could even take that sort of opposition. It's the fact that some of those kids or full adult males are just uh, slightly unhinged. I don't want to be afraid, but I don't want to die either. <laughs> so. But yeah, I'm relatively spooked, I think, at this point. I don't know whether Portland is kind of really woke in every place, which means if you booked, like, lunch, is somebody working there going to tell Antifa where we are? I just have no idea how these people are connected or not. Like Jurassic Park, isn't it? Very good street ahead. Wow, look at these trees. It's 2,400 years old. Almost looks like stone. So much.
cold, isn't it? Who knew if you drive really far north in America, it would get really cold. So I'm going to do a live stream. Um, basically, I was going to completely cancel Portland uh, and just do something really private with someone, which is still going to happen. Um, doing something big in Portland when I think I'm a bit too recognisable and I've been named. It's not like, hey, let's get the turfs. It's let's specifically have a go at Kelly J. Keane. Good afternoon if you're in the UK. Good morning if you're anywhere else. Uh, special good morning to uh, people in Portland and Oregon or Northern California who were hoping to go to Portland tomorrow. So let me tell you where I'm at. Um, as somebody who was named, readily painted as a Nazi, trans activists apparently are bussing in and Antifa are bussing in. And I've been told by both locals in Seattle and in Portland that Antifa have killed people and kind of got away with it. I've also got communication from the police. The gist of it is, um, whilst you have the right to free speech, we won't protect your right to free speech. Uh, there are some women that have been complaining that, you know, with this documentary, how is it anything without Portland? Well, it's also nothing if if it turns into a the death of Kelly J, <laughs> the death of Kelly J, or remember that time that woman in Portland got killed? I don't think that is the gotcha moment that it would uh, that women would like to see either. I don't think women getting beaten up in the street is also a gotcha moment. Have you reached out to the Patriot Prayer or the Pride Boys in Portland? They would be good for an interview or security. Oh my God, can you imagine? I don't know that encouraging mass violence is something that I want to be responsible for. <laughs> I'm going to turn our state around. I kind of want to just go and introduce myself. Yeah, if you want to. Do you think that's let's feasible? Go. Yeah, let's go. She just said she's doing we can do to help you, but it'll be a pleasure. Like in the UK, nobody, nobody sings the anthem <laughs> in a political meeting. It's just super American. I'm really happy. I had this discussion with my four year old uh, great uh, niece. She's She's telling me why can't my boy dog be a girl dog and the girl dog be a boy dog. And then she goes, I think I was a boy when I was born. I said, no, you weren't. Do you think that's coming from schools? Yeah, I do. She goes to preschool and TV. Hello, TV. I'm with Education Action Committee. You'll see that on my card. It is a division of the Federation, the Oregon Federation of Republican Women. Okay. But what we do is... First of all, we recruit for school board members. Oh, Are you managing to take over some of the school boards? Well, we need to remember, in Oregon, we have liberals from the top down. The sex education starting in kindergarten is pornographic. Yeah, I know. We have little I've girls. heard about that in the UK. I think COVID and online homeschooling woke up parents, they became more aware of what their children are being taught yeah. because they saw it on the screen. Yeah. In the UK, we've just had a man on the television on Friday night who had taken hormones, so had breasts, and he stripped naked and then played the piano with his penis. Um, and everyone was celebrating, and he goes into schools talking to children about his identity. That is, that is child abuse. Yeah, I agree. My name's Kelly J, or Posey Parker. Yes. Hello. Oh, I follow you. <laughs> oh, hello. Okay. I am a adult human female. Are you? I, do you know what? It's really, I knew straight away. Hi, Kim Rice, and you're going for... I'm running for the Oregon State Senate. Are you going to do it? Yes, I'm going to do it. This is considered hate speech, the word woman? The definition, because it excludes men. Um, well, I noticed that you had it on your clothes. I love it. I have a whole store. They're not going to cancel us, are they, Kelly? No, they're, no, they're absolutely not. not. Aside from money, I don't know how it's happening that anyone is convinced that it's an OK thing to sterilize and surgically remove healthy body parts of kids. Um, and then when I find out you can get that on insurance, because actually paying for that surgery is, is less costly for insurance companies than 
not doing it and getting sued for discrimination. In fact, just right here in Portland at uh, Dorn Becker Children's Hospital. Yeah, as young as nine. I was a teacher for 27 years and I stood against the mandates and I was taken out of my classroom. I was teaching kindergarten in last October of 21 and I stood against the mandates because of the, comp is the sexuality education that they're pushing in and gender confusing children. And unbeknownst to me, I had my school social worker come into my classroom and have a community circle with my beautiful children. And then she proceeds to tell them that if they want to be a boy, they can be a boy if they want to be a girl. And like, this is not even on their mind. No. And I had no forewarning. I had no idea that this was even going to take place. And I was just shell shocked. So it's real. I've lived it. It's real. Um, it's, it's an attack on women. <clears throat> it's an attack on women and an attack on our families. It's an attack on our culture. We yeah. call we call transgenderism in the UK a men's sexual rights movement. And I believe it is. Well, because we protect our children, I think the ultimate goal is to get to our kids. And so if they can get rid of us and separate us from our children, they get to our kids. And I and I know there's a why. I'm trying to figure out the why. Is it just power? Is it just money? Antifa attacked her political science. I really yeah. I went in a women's toilet. There was one stall in that women's toilet in uh, San Francisco, and it also had a urinal. Now I'm thinking, let's say you are a man who thinks they're a woman, and I would never call them a trans anything, or that for me they're just men. Yeah. Why can't you just use a toilet like you would anywhere else? Why do you need a urinal? I love the fact that all the people I've met this evening have been women. I really, I just, yeah. I think um, there's something about it that feels really like a community of women. I keep, like, I've got women in the UK who refuse to talk to women on the right. I used to be on the left, I'm no longer on the left, but I used to be on the left. And then people are like, oh, you talk to right. I'm like, woman first, politics second, women first. And the thing is, we're talking about something that's neither conservative or liberal. It's human. Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. It is yeah. people, regardless of their political views. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank you, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. So an autogynephiliac is somebody who gets sexually aroused by themselves as a woman. So the men that turn up to my events are either quiet AGPs, they're men in bad wigs, older men who don't really say anything. The men that do the shouting are men that are dressed like any other man, they're not dressed in women's clothing, they don't think they're women, they just use it as an opportunity to scream and shout at women. And then you have young middle class kids who go to university who have been convinced that this is a genuine civil rights movement. We went to Tacoma today because it was proving too dangerous to go to Seattle because Antifa were going to turn up, or certainly protesters. I don't know if Antifa actually turned up today, but Tacoma, we were told, would have police presence. He's tried. Uh, well, I think they might be. I just hope she's remembered her speaker because I didn't see it in the house. <laughs> If it wasn't so dangerous, it would be quite funny. Well, I'm just going to move it where I need to because I'm streaming for me. Test, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Can I take it now? That's good. Right, OK. Uh, right, good afternoon. So this is about Let Women Speak. I'm just trying to work out why this is droopy. Um, anyway, it's been on estrogen. We're here because in the United States of America, where they're supposed to have free speech, they absolutely are losing the ability to speak freely. And the people that are losing it the most are not conservatives, they're not Republicans, they're not Democrats, they're not people who vote Green. They are women on the basis of our reproductive capacity or not. And what these children don't understand because they've been cosseted in a, a, a glut of luxury and privilege, what they don't understand is they're actually raging a class war against women. Uh, who would like to speak?
hospital in what was supposed to be a woman's ward, only there was a man there and he raped her. For an entire year, both the hospital and the police refused to do anything except repeat the mantra that trans women are women and no men were there. So there was no rape. An entire year. You can't have the lesbian and gay kids. You can't have the lesbian and gay kids. Get the fuck out of here. You can't have the children. Uh, for people at home, what you can't see is uh, there's some really unhinged um, hormone popping kids behind. Uh, there's also some. Like, there's a man who should know better. He's like, he looks about 50 or 60 years old, and a woman standing near him with a beard. Oh, I despise this nation. I am my body. We are not a ghost in a machine. We are not minds in a meat sleeve. We are fully embodied whole human beings. step back so you're not intimidating the people standing here? What do you think I'm here to do? Intimidate people. Yes. Uh, because you're trying to kill us. No, nobody's trying to kill you. Who told you that? What is this if not an attempt at genocide? Who are you after if what not me? Talking? What are you talking about? You're after trans people? After doing what? <sighs> trying to stop you hurting yourselves. Hurting with ourselves? Silly, yeah, with, with binders, with so medication. Kindness. You think this it's, is kindness? I think it's knowing better than maybe you do about what life will offer you in the future. How old are you? I think I know quite well How what old life are you? will offer How me. old are you? 25. Right. Do you take testosterone? No. Are you going to? Does that matter? Well, oh. because it's really bad for you, actually. That's okay. why it matters. So are most things. No, no. Testosterone causes heart failure in young women. And hysterectomies increase the uh, risk of Alzheimer's and cancer. So it's important that it's important that even if this young woman thinks that she's not a young woman or is a young man, whatever, it's important that she doesn't medically alter their body because it's dangerous. I really hope you find a decent therapist who can help you accept who you are. You are scared. You are scared. Yeah, we have fear. You're absolutely bloody right. We have fear. What are you afraid of? The mass cultish mutilation of kids. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, the double mastectomies of teenage girls. I think we need to shut this up. We just need to stop before this gets any worse. Gender ideology have been incredibly healing. I've learned so much just from talking to these women about their own coming of age. Hi, hi. Hi, nice to meet you. You start to see yourself in other people and you realize you're not alone in your problems. Are there any problems that you really um, I just placed a 911 call and they should be on their way. As you're just go wherever I want, it's a public property and it's our city. Go home and get out of here. You work here? Yeah, I'm the principal of the high school. Your principal. Can you not get your students to go in anyway? Do you not have that sort of power? Listen, I could do that. I could say, we want you all to go. And then I'm just going to create a bigger situation for my son. So As a this is it's something important for them to watch and participate in, just like it is for you. So, Do you allow uh, mixed gender toilets in your in there? Yes. Do you have, do you have boys and girls oh, spaces? Totally. and yep. You don't recognize the difference between biological sex? Well, of course we do. My job is to love them all. They're kids. Okay. And what I about the girls that, what about the girls that want the It doesn't really make Excuse any difference to it. They're believe. really closing in. We need to just call this down okay. so we can all leave. I'm really disappointed because if I sent my daughter to your school and she had to share space with males... Well, that's, that's a, I'm a, we're a public school. 
We have to serve everybody in our community. I'm the executive director of the Rainbow Center. It's the local LGBTQ center here in Tacoma. We're very proud of our city and our city council. Our council has continued to vote to protect trans rights, as has the Washington State Legislature. So for people to come to our city and try and preach this kind of hate, we're going to have people show up to counter-protest. Trans people I know are all good, loving people. They're not violent people like they're portraying here. Their arguments are empty and they don't make any sense. But their anger is, is visceral. Can we call the police? Because they're being assaulted. Yeah. 911, maybe. Yeah. If there's any police here, there's a man in a yellow hat and he's going to fucking kill someone. We're not going to let any more people be assaulted. Uh, the police aren't coming. Stop pushing! Yeah, let's, let me just grab my stuff. Oh, it turned into a riot as soon as, as, soon as y'all were out of there. It was like they just started. Okay. Time. The police were called about three times, I think. They didn't really show the up. The police did nothing. Why wouldn't I want this young woman not to do that? Not once did they correct me. Like, she definitely, she was, she she'd obviously had a little bit of tea, I think. Yeah. Because she started, she had a bit of stubble, but yeah, yeah. she had little hands and, you know, a breast binder. Yeah. At the light, turn just think, Jesus. And she's probably just a lesbian. Probably just a lesbian. And a, maybe a vegan. I know, right? Please eat some food. <laughs> There's a lady called April. They're attacking April. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw one of the men take his hand and try to grab my phone. And his hand went over the top of my hand and just cr squeezed and crushed it. They're attacking April. And I just started screaming and then I got shoved to the ground. So we showed that to the police and with that footage they were able to find the man and they arrested him and put him in jail. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, down there. Go help her, Ryan, please. Get them up from the middle where those boys are. They stole her stuff. Those boys so I really see this movement as one that dissociates us from our bodies, dissociates kids from their body. This is the story of Little Red Riding Hood. She has to learn to trust her eyes and trust her ears. And when she says, Grandma, what big ears you have. Grandma, what big teeth you have. Uh, you know, she is learning how to trust her own sense perception. Obviously, you can't say a kid is gay just like you can't say a kid is trans. But it's well known that about 75% of ex extremely gender non-conforming children grow up to be gay, lesbian, or bisexual. And so that's why, you know, there's that um, mantra of stop transing the gay away, which is, for example, what they do in Iran. Uh, they execute homosexuals there, but they allow them to transition. So it's actually extremely conservative. I had gender dysphoria as a teen to young adult. And this was in the early 2000s, before it was a conversation. And when I had those feelings, and I told my friends, and I told them, my boyfriend, who's now my husband, it became a joke. It was like, sorry about your penis envy. And we'd be like, ha. There was a big moment of being like, well, what does this mean? That I had this feeling. I had the feeling that the penis was missing from my body, but I don't feel it anymore. It took a while for me to realize I grew out of it. And if I grew out of it, what does it mean for the thousands of kids going through this who are making permanent changes? I was trans identified from the age of 16 to 22. I got out of it because I stupidly thought that I was going to go argue with the TERFs and prove them wrong and show them up with my superior arguments. And so I went on gender critical Reddit and instead what I found was that they made a lot of sense. And I found Posey and I found her billboard and it just fell into place in a way that it hadn't when I was a few years younger. We found out after x-rays that April's hand was broken and she'd missed a substantial amount of work and income whilst it healed. 
So we are in Austin, Texas. This is going to be amazing. I've met the security team. Very excited. Never seen a real gun. We're doing it outside the Capitol. Uh, Megan Murphy's come up from Mexico. We've got Mary Lou Singleton. There's some quite well-known women coming to talk. We've got parents of kids that have been lost to the cult. I'm very excited for this to be a truly free speech event. Now it is far, so we've got a few things going on quite quickly, ensuring that as many women that come along get an opportunity to speak, um, and as many women that come along get an opportunity to listen. Get my good angle. Hello, hello, hello. I don't want echo. It's not karaoke. We call it Let Women Speak because women chose those words for ourselves. It's not because I think we should ask, it's not a beg, it's a Let Women Speak because when we were in Nottingham, in the UK, a group of trans activists tried to shut us down so the women organically just came up with Let Women Speak and we have held on to it because if nothing else, what we do here at Standing for Women and with Let Women Speak is we literally are guided by women that come to our events this is not a hierarchy, this is not a community even. This is just a place in which we say to any woman, whatever your views, you have a place to talk and it's really absolutely vital. So we're gonna start with the lesser spotted Canadian feminist, uh, Megan Murphy. The things that I want to say about this are so simple and straightforward that I almost feel stupid saying them, but there's no such thing as a trans person. That's not a thing that exists. Uh, there's no such thing as a trans child. There's no such thing as a person who's changed sex. There's men and women and boys and girls, and that's it. We haven't evolved past nature. Your thesis paper has not trumped biology. One of the reasons that we speak out, even though it's scary, even when we're ignored, even when we're punished, is because we need to show other people that they can stand up. And we're paving the way for women like Tulsi Gabbard and J.K. Rowling and for young women athletes and advocates for female inmates and just regular women, regular people to speak up. And we're still faced with so many people with power and privilege, the entertainment industry, big tech, the Democrats. And this is all because a very small group of entitled fetishists demand they be centered in every conversation. History books will look back on this time as a time when the population went along with the ridiculous lie that men can be women if they say so is embarrassing. I come here on behalf of the silent majority of women. Like them, I ask myself, who am I to speak? I told myself, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm no activist or feminist. Feminism doesn't want me. And the feeling is neutral. Right, there's a man losing his voice. It's going to be great when he does. We are going to continue because what we're not going to do is we're going to not let these men win. Good afternoon. Welcome to Austin. What happened to our fight to raise up girls, to let girls be whoever they want to be? We live in unprecedented times in which speaking about the truth is considered violent. Whatever happens to laryngitis? My name is Gabrielle Clark, and I guarantee you can't be louder than me. I guarantee you can't be bigger than me. I guarantee you can't be more motivating than me. If you could not be distracted by men that wish to silence you, then I promise we will win. If you can find your courage and you can speak with conviction, I promise we will win. Because... I 
me personally, I think the entire concept of identifying as a woman just it doesn't meet my reality of having been a woman. I've experienced so much um, discrimination, sexism, because I was born female that I feel like it's really disrespectful to the experiences of the women who have come before me to allow the word to be expanded to let men take it, particularly for the military. Um, the fact that women are such a small percentage of the, of the military and allowing men to take over female spaces can put women in actual material danger. We really need to be focusing on state representatives and they need to understand that there's a huge group of us who are not going to vote for any candidate that refuses to acknowledge that men and women are different. that the police didn't do anything about the sirens. I don't know the law or the ordinances, but I feel like it should be illegal to have a really loud siren on when there's no emergency. I want to find people who were today. So it was burning up. So right after my daughter was born, suddenly, like, what does it mean to be a woman or be a girl kind of meant something. Really, maybe you're thinking, well, there's not that many, right? Like, well, how, how many men in women's prisons could there be? Or how many men in women's bathrooms could there be, right? This is such a small thing. Is it really an issue? Like, ah, you know, who cares? It's like, there's enough. And some is enough. And it, some, it's too many. So we landed in Washington, at Washington Dulles Airport. And now we're in Loudoun County and we're just on our way to go and meet some incredible parents. Um, Loudoun County parents have made the news because they keep standing up to um, the powerful school boards. There was a girl who was uh, raped in a school bathroom by a boy who wearing a skirt. Yeah. called himself a girl or not, I don't know, but he was wearing a skirt. Um, but you know, the magic skirt of invading girls' spaces he was wearing. And they found out not only did the school not involve the parents, but he did it again. So basically a serial rapist enabled by stupid policies. And what was weird is the school then switched to gender neutral spaces. Knowing that that rape happened, they still wanted to pass the same policy 
and they covered it up. Well, maybe they thought, look, we had single sex spaces and we still had rapes. Yeah. Let's now just go full on gender neutral. In order to get to that point of going, yes, it's fine for girl, boys to be in girls' spaces, you have to yeah. pretend you've never met a teenage boy. Um, you have no idea about how girls feel about their privacy. Yeah. Um, and you, you just have to do so many, well, cognitive dissonance, yeah. like mental gymnastics oh, to yeah. get to a point where you go, that's fine. I'm just very excited about the chance to put nice things in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The British women have talked about, you know, any American man who's armed with a cowboy hat must be some far-right lunatic. No, they're the nicest people, aren't they? They're Texas. <laughs> So great to see you. There was a black guy there with like, really long dreads, and he, they called him in BuzzFeed a white supremacist. I'm really grateful that everybody could be here to, tonight. My name is Brandon Showalter. I'm a journalist with the Christian Post, and I've been so since the summer of 2016. But it was in late 2016 and early 2017 where I learned about the experimental gender medicalization and. Um, particularly what puberty blockers were. Through digging around for sources and finding out information, I learned about this brave woman in the UK <laughs> who had been interviewed under caution by the police because she had the audacity to say that the leader of a charity that was recently exposed for hiring a pedophile apologist as one of its trustees, Mermaids, the leader of that charity had taken her son to Thailand to amputate his genitals. And she has a temerity to call it castration on Twitter, and because of that, the police showed up and interviewed this brave woman. And I always thought she was courageous, but I remember thinking at that moment, this woman sees the clarity of the moment. I was happy at home with my four children, um, arguing a little bit online uh, with some people about some stuff, and then, and then I discovered that there were, uh, to not be delicate, um, men that look like truckers in dresses in women's forums online. Uh, and that was quite bad, and it's, isn't it awful because these men call themselves trans women? What on earth is a trans woman? And then I'm like, well, they're never going to... They're not going to call themselves women. They're not going to call themselves female. We're not doing this to kids, you know, at least, at least, at least. And then what I find out is I'm so stupid and naive because there is really... Once you can convince a population to pretend that a man can be a woman, there really is no end of what that particular lie can enforce people to do. I'm thankful to the work of Brandon and the amazing Clara Dansky and all you Loudoun County parents that became a battle cry for parents across the, the world, even. Cheers to you all. Cheers. Always been on the left, and like most of us who have... Um, like most of us who have spoken out against the, the narrative, I have been relegated to the far right. As soon as I said, hey, that's wrong, boom, you're far right. We don't have to listen to you anymore. I've developed more of an understanding of them, but I don't think I can ever become a conservative. It's just not the way my, my leanings are. I just want a sane left. You wonder how in the world did we get to this place where you know, par parents are actually by policy excluded from the from the uh, discussion if their child is exhibiting gender confusion in our public schools our primary concern was for our our middle school daughter our teenage daughter we were so nervous about her privacy and her safety but it's been our two little boys who have lost their privacy who they are having young little girls come in and out of their bathrooms daily. And my youngest little guy won't, he, he doesn't use the bathroom at school. I think for the United States, maybe abortion is a bigger portion of a single issue kind of a voter. But um, the thing about this issue is it changes you from one side to another side. It starts to affect other areas of your politics where you start thinking, well, if they were wrong about that, maybe they're wrong about this other thing. If I were to introduce you right now to some parents who are just on the cusp of this, what do you think that, do you think it's just because you just stayed firm and strong and said, I love you, I love you, I love you, but no? Yeah, we um, really followed cult deprogramming protocols. Oh, did you? Yeah. 
Yeah, I read a lot of books as I started learning more about this. Um, you know, what are the cult deprogramming protocols for this? And it's cutting off negative influences, surrounding the child with healthy influences as much as possible, applying boundaries. You know, we'll go this far, we won't go farther than that. And um, yeah, applying love and logic. Why? I love you no matter what, I'll always love you. If gender's fluid, why would we ever medicalize someone because they could change tomorrow? How, what do you think about that? You know, asking those hard questions. Would you advise parents to resist emotion or do you think emotion is fine in these situations? One of the things that I keep hearing from detransitioners specifically is to stay calm. Stay calm from the beginning. And so emotion is all right if it's honest, but freaking out and, oh my gosh, what are you doing? This is crazy. It's not so good. So because they want that reaction. They That's do. Right, OK. It's telling them, oh, when your parents react that way, it's because they're bigoted. It's because they're transphobic, yada, yada, yada. And so just being calm, and I actually learned this in counseling, some counseling experiences, no matter what somebody tells you, never act surprised. Always stay calm, just say, oh, that, tell me more about that. Okay. I can understand what this is about. Wow, this is all new to me. Can you right. be patient with me while I learn? Um, so that you don't trigger that, aha, I knew you were transphobic. When your kids are threatening suicide, body mutilation, drugs that will alter them forever. That's a that's a really big ask. It's hard. I forget who came up with brain theory, but it's about when there's somebody in crisis, how close you are to that person deems how, where the, the um, support goes. So if I am outside the crisis, I don't dump on the person who's having the crisis. I dump outside. So you don't further sort of cause them distress by saying, right. this is how this is affecting me. Right. right. Exactly. And so when your child is at the heart of this crisis, you need to dump your emotions elsewhere. And I really think that cutting off negative influences and surrounding the child with positive influences is, is one of the most powerful things you can do. We tell parents, no public school, no smartphone, no social media. Those are the things that you have to cut off. Right, because in the U.S. there have been a lot of studies mm. done and used to, to support the yeah. movement. Well, I think the, the good thing about the, the U.K. when it comes to the NHS is nobody financially gains from the outcome of the reports. Um, unfortunately, in the United States, many people financially gain from pretending that they think um, it's a good idea to transition children. Well, we have some politicians who are a little more brave than any of yours, so we do have politicians that will say the hateful phrase that a woman is an adult human female. We are here today in front of the Loudoun County Government Center starting a walk for um, support for Title IX, a support for women and girls. I think we'll start. I'm just going to gather everyone up, so you're going to hear me on this. We've got this lovely so building. Should they bring their signs? Yeah, if you want. Okay, yeah. bring your signs for the live stream. Oh, they they all want to be on camera. That's basically what we're learning. Good afternoon, everyone. We are in the hub of uh, what I would like to call the ground zero, zero of American fight back. The reason we came to London is the school boards is where the fights are going to be won, and it's going to be parents uh, especially mothers. Our school board, they had voted over a year ago to take parental rights away. I'm making it my mission to try to change my party, which I love, by making them lose. If they don't have a consequence, they will not change. Okay, so I've been a parent activist in Loudoun County since 2019. And I was going before the school board and warning them, because they were going to adopt a policy language to their non-discrimination policy, to incorporate gender identity. And I explained to them, so they cannot claim ignorance, because I told them to their faces, you have to choose. You're either going to protect sex, right, or you're going to protect gender identity. They are completely mutually incompatible. You cannot have them both. And I explained to them what would happen. So when policy 8040, that's the, um, the one that destroys parental rights and regulation 8040, they were warned about what would happen 
if they allowed gender identity to be what a male student could use to identify into the girls' locker rooms. They knew. So nothing that happened in Loudoun County in 2021 um, was a surprise. Someone needs to tell the party of women's lib that women and girls are not human shields for male violence. We do not want males in female sport. We do not want our children sterilized and mutilated for pharmaceutical profit. I've seen that show before. I watched my brother killed for medicalization, prescribed opioids at 16, following a spinal injury, and dead by 20 from legal prescriptions. I watched my grandfather beg his doctors with fists full of empty pill bottles to stop killing his grandson. I will not be bullied silent while pharma finds a new way to prey on children for profit. Walk down here, down to King Street, just through the property of the um, courthouse. We can't stop on there. We don't have a permit today for that. This is what real grassroots looks like. None of us are paid political operatives. We have them here in Fairfax County, a lot of them. Uh, this is what the real thing looks like. And, you know, nobody pays us to show up at the school board meetings. And then that's the lady in white who went viral called Stacy Langton. Do you we think have they've a... had enough? Do you think a lot of parents have had enough? Oh, absolutely. They're so angry. You know, there's so much anger. And that's what we're here for tonight and why we're here right before the election on Tuesday because that's what got Yunkin across the finish line last year. It was that what I had done fired up all that parental anger and they walked it into the voting booth. This is really what's happening in America. These small battles are won in the school board meetings. I've been talking about this on it for ages on YouTube saying this is what you need to do. Um, so it's interesting to see it in action. And I think time and time again I'm reminded when I see this sort of activity is there is no rational kind of left um, presented that's taking these sort of steps because they're too worried about getting cancelled by their own side. I found literal pedophilia and pornography in my son's school library at Fairfax High School. And so I came and I read from the books aloud and I showed some of the illustrations from the books to the board and they fled the room. And I've been here every school board meeting since for a little over a year. Um, going to keep up the protest against these communists they remove this gender ideology and this pornography and pedophilia from the school. I am on a mission. There are millions just like me. And that is why we are going to win. And with that, I'd like to welcome Kelly J to the microphone. I'm so inspired by you and the range of uh, incredible mothers in particular. Dads too, dads too. But incredible mothers in particular. We bore our children. We've heard their first, first words. Uh, we gave them their first cuddles. And now we are going to protect them from this cancer that is transgenderism, that is the erasure of their sexual boundaries, that is just mass grooming. And it's not just in the United States. It's in the UK. It's in Australia. It's in Canada. It's the entirety of Europe. It's anywhere where we're supposed to be so-called progressive. It's really difficult to pretend that I'm not transphobic because transphobic simply means that I don't go along with the ideology and I absolutely don't. I'm really happy to say yes, I'm a transphobe if it means I could just carry on speaking directly and speaking the truth. Whether that's anti-trans is another issue because I don't actually think transgenderism really exists. So I don't think anybody is born in the wrong body and I don't think it's possible to change sex. So that's kind of like saying I'm anti-God instead of I just don't have it any belief. I love a big car. <laughs> I was I was supposed to be American, I think. We are in the beautiful state of Florida in Miami. To the left. Uh, in a, the best car in the world. <laughs> We're in a Hummer, an arm an armored Hummer, uh, driving to go and talk in Miami. There's a doctor called Steve uh, Gallagher, and she advertises on TikTok promoting double mastectomies to teenage girls. It is what it is, and it doesn't even look like they're going to show up. I don't no. think they, well, every time so far, 
They've either been skulking around the place and then they really come out in force or, or not. We've been here, Dave. Yeah. We've been here since like 11.30. <laughs> I know when they don't show up. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Miami. It, I don't think you can say that without a hundred different songs just flowing through your brain. Uh, it's really hot. We actually have more security than TRAs, so that's great. But thank you to uh, the amazing women who've organised this. Because we are small in number due to the fear factor of both Antifa showing up um, and your jobs being at risk, uh, we find that uh, many women don't feel that they can come and talk. Uh, because of uh, Chicago, there have been quite a lot of women in Miami who really felt like they could not come today. I'm going to hand over to local women to talk about what's going on here, and then I will grab the microphone back repeatedly, so uh, sorry about that. Um, okay, who would like to speak? So I want to start this off on a positive note. Um, so I'm going to bring up the Florida Medical Board and their vote. It's not official yet, but they have proposed a new rule to ban um, any puberty blockers or sex uh, reassignment surgery for children under the age of 18. Um, and unfortunately, any children that are already in the process of transitioning will still be allowed to go through with it, but it's a start. The doctors who disregard this rule, they're going to risk losing their license. But Dr. Gallagher, who we are here for today, does about four to 500 surgeries a year. Children have flown in from all over the world to right here in Miami to get cut up by her after being influenced by her TikTok videos. This woman posts videos repeating over and over how she is saving lives while she glamorizes their mutilated bodies and poses with them like trophies. And this is happening just five minutes from where we stand. This message is for the Puerto Rican people on the island from a Puerto Rican in Florida. For years, the religious and conservative sector have been exposing the truth about gender ideology in Puerto Rico. This, it is the only reason why it has not been incorporated into public school curriculum. Since they are the only group speaking up about this, gender ideology has leaked into academia, legislation, and more. Gender affirming therapy and surgery have been proven to not have long-term benefits. It's so nice to be here and see so many of my t-shirts. I am a novice powerlifter, a jiu-jitsu enthusiast. Um, I'm pretty much a tomboy. Um, <laughs> I learned about this, this issue with uh, men and women's prisons, and that's what really set me off. Because how are we allowing rapists to enter a cage with a woman? We all damn well know what's going to happen. Recently, girls in Vermont are being punished for refusing to undress in front of a boy. Remember me when you have your first baby and you're referred to throughout your pregnancy as a birthing individual, a pregnant person, and it makes you feel kind of dehumanized. In the parking lot? Where is it? Remember me when your son comes home from like with school a and says, you that school. Should we do that? Do you want to go and finish this at Gallagher's office? Okay, I don't know that I'm going to walk. <laughs> Can I have my microphone? Thank you very much. Right, live stream people, we're now going to go to a different place. Okay, so in the United States of America, the land of the First Amendment free speech, you don't have any right to gather if you're not moving. So if you want to walk and protest, you can without a permit. If you're standing still, even in an area where you, like a park, you need a permit. So it's a little bit crazy that you can't be in a public park um, and speak. Like even just a small gathering like that. In the UK, if you want to march, which often means like marching across roads and traffic, then you need a permit. You need the police's permission. Um, obviously, some people don't. So. <laughs> like the people gluing themselves to the road at the moment for the climate. They're walking, they just had a, <laughs> they just had a rest. And Southwest 37th Avenue. All right. Surgery center, so she, I guess she might be here. There's a surgeon in London who will remove the breasts of like 18 year olds. And he's had kind of oil painting artwork commissioned of him slicing off breasts. 
everyone that's here today knows what autogynophilia is, and there are autogynophiles on the WPATH board. Autogynophilia being a sexual paraphilia uh, tends to cluster with other sexual paraphilias. People who are autogynophiles have other paraphilias. And I think that um, when we see that they have included eunuch gender as a new gender, and we talked about the fact, or not the fact, and said that, asserted that, Just make sure kids as young as what, six, nine years old can know that they are eunuch gender. I am a behavioral health practitioner. The principle of least harm is in our code of ethics. Transgender medicine and the, the affirmative care model basically mandates the most maximally invasive intervention from the beginning. Bone density loss, cancer risk, stroke risk, unknown effects on brain maturity, loss of libido and sexual, sexual function or interference with the development of these in children who take Lupron, diminished possibilities of mature adult relationships, loss of fertility, and loss of the potential for breastfeeding. This is not least harm. We've been very active at the school board. There's a lot of people that are coerced into thinking this is a, a civil rights movement and it's uh, it's the opposite. This is uh, a crime against humanity and it's uh, it's destroying innocent lives. I want to say that I ended up getting peaked while I was serving active duty in the army and we ended up having one of the, the transgenders in our uh, unit who was identifying as a woman and infiltrating his way into women's spaces and then also um, had gone to infantry school as a man and then was going around telling everybody that uh, he was the first female in the infantry. I think today went really well. I was really scared, I'm not going to lie, because uh, Transifa was all over the web talking about they were going to show up and shut us down, but they didn't. So uh, it went amazing. Maybe they knew we had security. The police showed up for us, which I think also made a huge difference. I'm sure if they saw the police, they would just leave. So I've just been into the Heritage Foundation, picking up my gold, to go and talk about any way in which they can help work together, non-partisan, genuinely trying to stop the mutilation of children and securing women's rights, which I'm sure will be characterized as working with the devil, ironically, but it's gotta be done, this is just too big, I think. They've been a consistent voice. When I talk to people on the right, they are really well informed and often use the same talking points as maybe radical feminists. So in that meeting there, the director, he talked about autogynophiles and he knew about the surgeries, he knew about puberty blockers, he knew about the very successful strategy Florida's had in uh, stopping these harmful interventions with children's bodies. So I don't really know why anybody would not work with these people. Well, there was the holy, holy water mist sprayed at all of us. No, they absolutely respect that I'm coming from a different place. In fact, they even said that they wouldn't post about this or share this information that I was there this morning just in case it was bad for me. So I really do struggle with the kind of left idea of, of not talking to some people. I just, I don't, it's not getting them very far. So it's not even a strategy that works. Hopefully it's very well attended. Somebody said, oh, what speakers of note? And I was like, every woman is a speaker of note. I know that sounds really, hey, everyone's just the same. But really at these events, you have no idea who's going to speak, what they're going to say, what expertise they've got, what theories they've got, what experience they've got. And so many women bring something that no other woman does that can speak to a section of kind of society that Just I'm not talking right to. Now, it's, it really is quite brilliant. Cara's organizing this, so I think she's done a lot of work. Should I tell people to start gathering or leave them in the shade? Uh, we'll, we'll wait till one. There are two documentary film crews here today. There's another person doing it for her own channel. Um, this is the channel to watch it, FYI. So I'm just gonna mill around for a little bit longer uh, until it's time. Could one of you lovely people tell me if I'm perfectly in shot? And just have a look. So I wanna make sure that, is it about there? 
Yes, you are excellent. Yeah? Good. Okay, what's the time? I'm starting a bit early, everybody. Thank you to uh, Cara, is that right? Cara, as we say. Cara Dansky for uh, On The Ground Organising. Um, we are here to let women speak, which is basically to break the silence created by uh, trans activism. So I'm going to say some of the things that in the United States of America could you lose you your job. Right, one, women don't have penises. Uh, two, transitioning children is abuse. Uh, three. <laughs> um, what? So we've got some uh, trans activists now. Bonkers. Um, so you've got confused children like this. Actually, should we go around in a circle before they get too close? That's quite good. They're exercising their free speech, uh, which is fine by us. We're just going to have to make sure that we speak nice and clearly in our microphones because that's not working. So. Stop abusing kids! Right. Uh, here's the rule here. What we, we have to speak this way. Uh, have they got a permit? No. I don't know, but I don't think the park people care. They won't bother them? Okay, so we had to get a permit. Thank you. I call myself George Sand. It's a pseudonym. Remember when women could take male names as a pseudonym? Let us speak! Let us live! Let us live! And the thing of point to do is probably do better. It was a in mental health and I know that people we disassociate from our bodies we objectify ourselves we commodify ourselves and we cut off for lots of different reasons sometimes it's a response to trauma sometimes it's just how we're raised there's lots of different reasons and a good doctor and a good therapist would say you're fine you're fine how you are your body is fine but gender affirming care is preying on vulnerable people with mental health problems and confused children. Dr. Daniel Metzger of WPATH said, I know that I am talking to a blank wall when I am talking to 14 year olds about the side effects of puberty blockers and cross sex hormones. I am talking to a blank wall. This is a WPATH endocrinologist. This is not informed consent. This is medical abuse. And again, this is an attack on women. We are telling women and girls to ignore our boundaries, ignore our instincts, ignore what's in front of our eyes, and to be kind. they've got a right for free speech. I was like, yeah, but we had to get a permit. When I got our permit, the sergeant that I spoke with told me that they do have a First Amendment right, which they do, but that they can't disrupt it like this. And I'm telling them that, and they're just not listening. No borders, no These words have meaning. 
I'm telling you, the most difficult women to reach across the aisle are women on the left. And by doing that, what you're doing is you're giving up this fight to men on the right. So if you want women, particularly women on the left, but just plain old women, you know, the old fashioned kind with vaginas, the real ones, if you want plain old women, us, our voices to be those that are heard above all else, then you have to support working across the aisle. You have to think first and foremost, we are women. The things that divide us are secondary. First and foremost, we are women. Every time you castigate a woman for talking from the left to the right, for standing with other women, you basically hand this argument over to men on the, le on the right. And those men on the right, they don't have the same interests as we do. <laughs> uh, they don't want the same things for women as we do because they're just not women. I think it went really well. It's always uh, a little upsetting when we get counter protesters that are so aggressive. My first thought was women could have hearing loss from this. This is not safe. They just want to shut us down. They do not want anyone talking about this because they know once people hear the truth, they won't buy it. They're trying to make us I did. believe absurdities and compel our speech. Oh, so this is really a free speech issue. Because the American public has just been lied to about what's going on here. The American public, like every everyone ever, all over the world, has essentially been told that transgender is a word that describes a marginalized community of people and that this is all a civil rights movement for that marginalized community of people that could not be more wrong. What in fact it is, is a top-down, heavily funded movement to actually abolish sex throughout the law and throughout society. It is one of the most authoritarian, regressive, misogynistic, homophobic, politically regressive movements I've ever seen in my lifetime. But most Americans across the political spectrum do not understand that. And so events like this bring a lot of awareness. The person stands talking here, the camera's here, and then the people listening to the speeches are there. Barricades and the um, TRAs are behind that, which means we should be quite far from the noise. I don't know much about it. I think it's a bit feisty as a place. Went for a Starbucks this morning. I've got a bit of a vibe of less uh, friendly customer service. A little bit more like joyless, here's your coffee. I don't know, can you judge a place by Starbucks? Because Philadelphia's a trans town. This town is queer as hell. This town is gay as shit. This town is trans as fuck. Oh, no, I want to entertain this. I need a laugh. What do you want? Oh, bye. Oh, they come with speakers. Oh, yeah. You're in Philly. Fucking Philly. Pack your shit. Get out of here. And there's no such thing as a trans child. That is simply a child on the part of being mutilated and civilized. Speech is not free speech. What's happening is they are beginning to sort of surround, which is fine because there's barricades and there's police. It's very interesting. So there's a girl behind who says there's 300,000 uh, children who identify as trans in the UK, in the USA. That's 300,000 children at risk of being sterilized. That's 300,000 uh, medical patients for life. That's 300,000 children who lose their sexual function. Trans is beautiful! Trans kids deserve love, happiness, and to play in sports. And if you say anything different, you're a bigot. You're a bigot. That's bigotry. And if you think that women only deserve shit, if they were born with a vagina, that's not feminism. That's not feminism! That little vulnerable girl who just spoke to me, calling herself a him, is a girl and will grow up to be a woman. And it doesn't matter if she has her breasts right off, it doesn't matter what she calls herself, when it comes to how at risk she has from male violence, she is just as much at risk. I'm his mother.
Get it right, bitch. Tell him again, Ma, you my fucking mother. I'm cisgender, but even I understand. Why the fuck can't y'all? Turfs, go home. Uh, the, the voice you may be able to hear screaming is a young boy who's been gaslit by his autogynophile father who claims that he's a woman, claims that he's his mother. AGPs, like fetishy, pervy men, they gaslight their children, they gaslight their wives, and they just tell everybody that they're the victims. No man that walks around in a bad wig and makeup is a victim. Okay, who's next? Thank you, Kelly J. Thank you for standing up for the truth and for my daughter's future. She needs to go back to her side of the fucking bathroom. You need to go back to your side of the fucking bathroom. And if you're in PA and you're a taxpayer and you don't know that your taxes are paying for this, you're paying for you to mutilate their bodies, you should be very alarmed about that. The Chop Gender Clinic secured 100% rate of insurance coverage for puberty blockers with the help of our governor. From 2015 to 2021, Pennsylvania saw a 5,000% increase in spending on gender-affirming care for minors under 18. All they want, all those groomers want, is mutilated kids so giant AGPs can pretend it's not a fetish. That guy gaslighting his kids, he doesn't give a shit about children, otherwise he wouldn't have pretended to be a woman. We don't give a fuck about what they got to say. If we did, we wouldn't have all this loud ass to amplification. These paraspectical invaders are eating our movements from within, trying to tell women that we have to accept them in our spaces. And very sadly, there's children gaslit on the other side, and there's a load of women who think they're gonna earn some sort of sanctuary when those men take over. It doesn't matter how much you get on your knees and fillet these men, they're still gonna steal your rights. Your dad's a pervert. Your dad's a pervert, love. Your dad's an AGP pervert. All those people have got is lies. Lies about me. Lies about what a biological sex is. Lies about their motivations. Every single one of those men with their pretty makeup and their bad wigs. They just want to get their penis out in spaces that we don't want them. Sexism. Can we all forget about what sexism is? It's a discrimination on the basis of one's sex. There is no such thing as girl power or black girl magic if you can't define what a girl is. And acknowledge that women's bodies are different from male bodies. And that the two are not interchangeable. And do you know why else we're going to win? Philly. You best remember my face. You best remember my name. Cause I will fucking see you again. I really miss, I don't know whether I just don't remember. <laughs> you are a beast. I don't know how you do this girl. This is stressful. So it's Monday and uh, we're in New York and it's the last event and unfortunately uh, it hasn't turned out to be the sort of day that I was anticipating. So I arrived at my rally <laughs> and then I saw it was being protested. 
got to try and not speak too loud because I'm in the start. So let me tell you, I went up to um, the police and said, I can't uh, get through. And he said, oh, do you want some help getting through? Took me around to behind a van, it's absolutely shed of police. And then they said, he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna help you. Um, I'm not risking my men. So, yeah, I don't even know, I don't quite know what to say. Women are speaking. Yeah, great. So, my event's going on um, without me. So, amazing. Just amazing. What a terrible uh, last little thing. Okay. Um, see you later. No, no security will escort me. I can't even get anywhere near security. There's nothing. Um, so there's there's nothing I can do. Um, I think actually when it comes to telling the story, I think it's, uh, I think this is um, indicative of the United States in 2022 and how they feel about women speaking. Um, it's just absolutely bonkers. Uh, so anyway, See you later. Bye. Instead of going to the rally, I go to Starbucks and I did a live stream and told everyone where I was. <laughs> I then thought, that's quite a stupid thing to do. So then uh, this lovely woman who was with me got her husband to drive around and, and we drove around a couple of times with an idea of like the amazing women in New York were gonna send security. Once I really felt unsafe, I felt it was just impossible to rationalize my instinct on not going. It's just very chilling that a woman doesn't have the right in the US to basically say a woman is an adult human female. It's permitted for her to be intimidated, uh, lose her job, uh, be screamed at, shouted at, and basically not taken very seriously. And I think it's really, really frightening. But most women, if they speak, they feel just empowered, which is a word that gets used a lot, and actually I don't even like it that much. But it is completely fitting that these women have been desperate to say these things, and then they get to say them. I'm stood in the craziness, and I look at, and there's somebody speaking to camera with their voice shaking, and the, their speech is in their hands and they're, they're struggling to read because their hands are shaking so much. And I just, I'm quite overwhelmed by how moving it is and what a difference that makes to that person's life that even through fear, they manage to tell their story. I want women to talk in the street. I want them to be able to talk in the street and say things that they are desperate to speak out loud. I think there's a danger of often thinking that more people know about it than they do. And what's overwhelming is there is no political side that's willing to really stick up for women. We are a constituency all of our own. I think I speak to women. I don't speak for women, I speak to women. And hopefully embolden women to speak for themselves. I don't get to pick whether or not I'm the right person. That's, that's up to other people. But if I just keep doing what I'm doing and I do it sincerely, then I think that that transmits. I just know I'm right. I'm Kelly J. Keane and I'm a women's rights campaigner.